push. Oh, sh get Marco codes. Hi, Marco here. Let me show you five tips and tricks I use a lot when I work with Git in IntelliJ. First up is keeping your feature branches up to date with the latest changes from main through rebasing. And there's actually three ways of doing it. Now let's have a look at what I have. In my Git repository, I have two branches, a main branch and I use a management feature branch. At one point I had three commits and at the time of the created my first REST controller commit, I branched off and created the new user management feature branch, this line here. And then another commit happened on the main branch, updated application properties. What I now would like to do is, instead of my starting user management feature branch to branch off from the created first REST controller commit, I'd like to rewrite history and branch off from the updated application properties commit. As I just mentioned, there's three ways of doing it. The first way, you click that mighty branch switcher item widget in IntelliJ in the lower right corner. And by the way, that widget alone could use a hundred hours of tutorials. There's so many features packed inside. And then obviously what you could do is you could click the main branch and hit rebase user management feature onto main. Tiny caveat, what you need to do before that is execute a git fetch or in IntelliJ speak, an update project to fetch all the latest changes. Otherwise it won't work properly. There's by the way, also the inverse. If you just imagine you had checked out the main branch, what you could do is you could again, click the widget. Now click the user management feature branch and choose checkout user management feature and rebase the branch onto main. It's the same functionality that I just showed you, just the other way around, depending on what branch you're on. But imagine default use case, you're on your user management feature branch. What you want to do ideally is you want to click origin slash main under the remote branches section and choose to pull into user management feature using rebase item. I think the wording is a bit off here because essentially what it does is it does a git fetch and a git rebase, exactly what I told you to do. And now you can see locally already my user management feature branch. Yay, history has been rewritten as it's now based on the created first REST controller commit. Now, whenever I want to push, what I obviously will get is because I re rewrote history, I'm gonna get a push rejected message, merge rebase. No, you don't want to do that. Instead, what you want to do is when you're about to push, you want to choose the force push setting, right? And then you'll see in a second, once I push all those changes, yes, now locally and on origin, history is a straight little line. That's the way I like it. Up next is using IntelliJ's Git console. It not only helps you with workflows like the one you just saw, the rebasing workflow, but it also helps you dealing with those passive aggressive colleagues of yours who tell you, I'm not gonna use IntelliJ Git integration features because I don't really know what they do behind the scenes. Let me show you something. Well, first of all, you want to make sure to have the Git tool window open and then click the console tab here. In this console, you'll find every Git command that IntelliJ executes for you. It's all in there. For example, a couple of minutes earlier, we did the git push. So you see git push is here, a couple of flags which are hidden, which you don't need to worry about. And when you scroll right, you can even see that git didn't do a force push like a normal force push. It did a force with least push, making sure that no one else changed your remote origin before pushing the changes. So whenever you click a button, whenever you click the magic branch switcher down here, do a rebase, or you just do like an update project, click okay you will see in the Git console what IntelliJ executed for you. This time it executed a Git fetch, right? When I tried to update the project and you might wonder why are there four fetches? It's because I had to reshoot this segment a couple of times, making stupid errors along the way. Up next is squashing commits. You know, I'm known by some of my colleagues to have the quick commit finger. What that means is I commit like playing a video game, hitting auto save all the time. So instead of just writing hello, I just might write age, work in progress with a very nonsensical commit message. And then, you know, hell, and then, you know, commit again with work in progress. And then the third time, hello, and now the word is done, essentially, right? Which is three commits. And obviously those three commits don't help anyone. They don't help me. The commit message is a bit off. And what to do now? Well, simple. Before pushing, you just select all the three commits in the commit log, right click, squash commits, then come up with a sensible commit message like edit the word hello to pomxml, right? 
click OK, let IntelliJ and Git do the magic, and you'll see that, well, I just added the word hello to pomxml file. Everything is fine. Again, history has been rewritten. Which brings us to the compare with branches feature, which is super, super useful. So imagine I've been working on the user management feature branch for a while, and I want to compare it to any branch or maybe just the main branch to see what the differences are between those two branches. So I'm going to click main and I'm going to go compare with user management feature feature branch. Two panels open up. You can see the top panel here. I would see commits that exist in the main branch, but don't exist in our user management feature branch. There aren't any commits because user management feature is ahead a couple of commits. But commits that exist in user management feature branch that don't exist in our main branch here in the bottom panel, you can see there's two commits actually. Now you can click them. You can see even visually in with the blue color here that the pomxml file was modified. I could double click the pomxml file. IntelliJ would immediately show me the word, you know, the line where something changed. And when I make this smaller again and go down here to my starting user management feature commit, I can see a new, com a new user controller was added in green here or deleted in red and whatever. Super useful if you just want to have a quick overview of the differences commit-wise between different branches. That brings us to the last trick, which is what I would call the merge commit view. What does that mean? Well, let's go back to our compare branches feature. I just told you you could have a look at the individual commits and see what files changed. What you also can do in IntelliJ, and it doesn't only work in, in those panels, it actually works everywhere where you can see multiple commits. You can simply highlight many commits and commits, and IntelliJ will, so to speak, merge them, and you'll see the effective change across all the commits. Now you can see that when I selected both commits, the user controller was added and the pomxml file was modified. If I did the same thing in my git log, right, let me close this down, what you'll find is, well, select one commit, you'll see pomxml file changed. Select two commits, well, user controller is here. Select three commits, you can see, well, the properties file is here. Four commits, you know, you can see all those changes combined. Super useful, by the way, when you are about to push changes and have multiple commits, then you can easily see, well, what is the effective outgoing change that you're sending to your remote repository? All right, that's it with my tricks. Now I wanna know from you, what tricks are you using whenever it comes to Git and IntelliJ? Please leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and see you next time. Sayonara.